So let's talk about something we actually don't see that often, um, which is virologic failure. Um, uh, so so um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uh, bop this over to Eric, because um, he, he, um, I think we've got to make sure we get a, get a mix here. But, uh, so virologic failure, like um, your yeah. approach? Yeah, or, so you... you know we don't see it that often, fortunately. Right. You know, resistance companies are going out of business <laughs> because the treatments are so good. But so, you know, we bring these people in when we do their viral load. If the viral load has gone up, we always want to confirm. Yep. And we always have to do dil due diligence, make sure they're taking their meds consistently. And if they're not, we'll figure out why. Make sure there are no important drug drug or drug food interactions, which is still relevant with some of our yep. more commonly used therapies. The cations and things can affect absorption of even some of the new integrase inhibitors. So you do all of that, and if you really think that they're experiencing virologic failure on a stable regimen, we do resistance testing. Um, and the resistance testing will usually answer the question, right? Um, because if they have no resistance, then there's probably something going on with the way they're taking their meds. Uh, and if they have resistance, then we divine, design a new regimen. And you know, we don't have a lot of, well, we probably don't have any randomized control trial data for first-line failure on integrase inhibitors. inhibitors. Right, yeah. But we have enough other data that we can probably extrapolate from. And the reality is that you know, we know unequivocally that boosted PIs with even recycled nukes, right. and certainly one active nuke is going to work. Boosted PIs with an integrase inhibitor is going to work. I think there's lots of options that people can switch to. The most important thing we need to do is figure out what went wrong right. yep. because it's so unusual to see it actually happen. Yeah, and there's so many steps where things can go sure. wrong. And the fetch close, you know, the, the basic, what I always look, look at this now is that <clears throat> adherence somehow got, in the, got, got messed up. Yeah. And whether it was that the patient lost interest, the patient created had some sort of event in their lives because it became more chaotic or chaotic for the first time and really threw them off. Whether their insurance or their mm. partner's insurance was canceled and they were too embarrassed to talk about getting it set up again because they were trying to do something else. You know, there's a lot of little things in life events. It's not the medications failing, it's the medications failing to get inside the patient. Right, Oftentimes yeah, right, yeah. that is the no, problem. No, I think that's right. And, yeah. And, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's such, such so infrequent now to see someone who's got detectable virus who's actually taken their medications that it always makes you wonder, are they telling the truth? And here, the practical thing to do is just call the pharmacies. Sure, and, and see when they when exactly, we feel it, sure. Incredibly yeah. accurate. Yeah, yeah. I'll just say that, you know, uh, when a patient tells you they're taking all the medications and they have quantifiable viral loads and no resistance. Above, say, um, 200 or yeah, so. Above yeah, above 200. And I think we should talk about the low quantifiable level viral loads and how we handle that. Um, but. Um, I have found it helpful to have somebody else in my office talk to that individual because the patient doesn't want to disappoint me sure, by acknowledging that they're yeah. not taking their medication. Yeah, sure. They know that I've encouraged them to do it and they don't want to admit it. And so, you know, I always have our case manager talk to people to find out what are the obstacles in their lives that are really preventing them from being able to take the medication the right way. But checking pharmacy fill dates, which is often available in our electronic medical records now, is a beautiful and verified, <coughs> validated way to assess adherence. Turn, turns out it's unbelievably rare for someone to fill their prescriptions and then throw them away. It does yeah. happen. <laughs> it does happen. We, we had one person who fa famously did it in our clinic for a while, and right. his sister ratted him out to us. <laughs> there, are, there are pharmacies that do auto refills. Right. Yeah, that is a, yeah, 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 that, that, is a that, that can create a, a problem, lot of them right? Do. Yeah, the auto auto refills, sure. But but I think it, it it is an excellent place to start. And 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 you know, I mean, I've pe have had patients kind of saved by a copay card because they couldn't tell me they couldn't afford yeah. their copay, yeah. and yeah. and and you know, or or saved by a pharmacist who took the time to help them put pills in a pill box. Yeah, you, yeah. you know, we, and, and so we we we, we uh, had partnered with a pharmacy that was doing blister pack for us for. for for years, they're terrific, but they unfortunately went out of business. So we now have to wow. find a new blister pack right. producing pharmacy. These are incredible things, packages with the days of the week right, right, yeah. and all the pills that they have to take, especially for people with complicated I like, I like your point really though, though, Ian, is the fact that increasingly I know in, in my practice, the patients I'm taking care of have very different backgrounds than I have. 
in terms of medical sophistication, medical literacy, all kinds of things, socially economic. Most of them aren't HIV specialists. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. But, the, and, 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 and I agree. I, I, I am an authority figure for them, and they don't want to disappoint me. So having them speak to someone else in the clinic that may look like them or come from the same community can actually be very revealing as to what's really going on in their life. Because they may not tell me that they lost their job and that's why they haven't taken their medications, but they still show up for the, for the clinic visit because they've got time on their hands. But, you know, that's not always a good thing. And they're using drugs and right. things they're like using that. Drugs or, or even embarrassed to be homeless. Things right. Like right, sure. Exactly. The, it would, it, we'd be remiss, though, if we didn't mention that as good as everything is and how easy it all seems, we still have these rare patients in our clinics that we've been treating for 20 years who have a lot of resistant yes, virus. Right. Oh, yeah. And have just been very difficult. And I know we're going to talk a little bit about some of the new drugs, yeah. um, but occasionally we need to fall back to the lessons learned over a decade ago about how to manage people with truly multi-drug resistant virus.